I wanted to make a quick video that showed how to orient a part when it's imported from another CAD uh, system. I mean, this works if you want to orient a part that you've even made in Gibbs Cam and want to move it or whatever. But the example I'm going to use today is something that's imported from an outside uh, CAD system. The system I'm going to use is SolidWorks, but it's the same principle across the board, whether it's Inventor, Katia, um, Inve um, SolidWorks, whatever, it doesn't make a difference. So. Let's go ahead and we're going to open up a SOLIDWORKS file here. So you can see all the different ones that I have and we're gonna open up that one. Okay, so it's imported and I don't know if any of you have ever run into this where, where did it go? Like I imported it and I, I've had a lot of people call and uh, when I went out and did support calls, they'll say, oh, you know, th it, th this file doesn't open because when I do it, it does this. Now what happens a lot is especially if up here, if it if it does import and you don't get any warnings, when the part's imported, it's actually here, it's just really far away. So let's zoom out. So there it is over there. So this um, no zoom will zoom into your stock. So you might get the impression that uh, the part didn't come in. Another way to check this and to check if all of the parts came in, let's say you had an assembly and it was a bunch of different parts, we can go view, shrink wrap, and you can see that it shrink wraps, it puts the stock around the part. Now, this is where the orientation comes into play. Even though the stock wrapped around the part, you can see that my home position, my XY coordinate system is still located over here. All right, this is a very big fundamental part of Gibbs. That coordinate system and this plane cannot move. It's like, think of it as the horizon. Like you cannot move it around. You can move the part around that and create other planes on top of that. But this base coordinate system, this XY plane, you can see I can't delete it. It won't move. All right, so what we need to do is we need to get this part in some kind of plane here that makes sense. All right, so that's what I'm about to do. All right, so it's pretty simple, pretty straightforward stuff. I'm gonna go ahead and turn on my face selection. I'm gonna zoom into this bad boy and I'm just gonna pick a face. I'll pick this face right here. I'm gonna right mouse button click and say align face to coordinate system. Oh, where did it go, right? And we do, if we do the same thing, we're gonna get the same situation because that zooms into stock. Where it went was it aligned itself to the coordinate system. So it takes the theoretical center of that surface and puts it at my X, Y, Z, zero. It always points away. You can see the positive here, the positive Z is pointing away from the face that you align it to. All right, so now I need to get my stock around this. Um, yeah, I mean, I could go through here and put all these numbers in, but that's a humongous pain in the neck. So I'm gonna just come here, hit view and shrink wrap. So when I hit shrink wrap, it gives me a extent XYZ bounding box. And again, for the bounding box or for the stock, I'm sorry, for the stock, you can always just change it right here. If you wanted like, let's say an extra inch in X or inch in Y, you can just add it down here. Okay, so that's great. But really what I do is I want my zero point, my XYZ zero to be, let's say in the bottom left corner of this. How do I do that? I could guess and move it around, but that's gonna take forever. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit on my documents tab. And right here I can see my, my stock origin. So basically what this is, is this is telling me how far this edge is. Actually, let me turn this around so we can see it in the right orientation. There we go. This shows me how far in the X positive my stock is. So this, when I look at the isometric, it's, it mimics what's on my screen when I look at the isometric view. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead up here and I'm gonna turn off face selection, I'm gonna select the whole solid, modify, oops, translate. There it is. So we wanna, what I do is I always start out with that being zero because you know, sometimes you'll have a, a number in there that's left over. So the first thing I do is I clear out all the numbers in my translate. And then you can see X in the positive is this number, 2.73593. I'm going to do control copy, control paste. 
And because I want to move it the opposite direction, I'm going to make that a negative. And I'm going to go ahead and click do it. There we go. You know, I just realized I said bottom left, but what I'm going to do is I'm putting the upper right. But it's the same principles apply. So I'm going to go ahead and move it in the Y now. And don't worry about the stock. Again, we're going to, we're going to shrink wrap visible once we get it oriented the correct way. And then it's going to be a piece of cake. So in the Y positive, we have that. I'm going to control C. Again, I'm going to make this all zero. And I'm going to come here and hit control V. And I'm going to make it negative. So you can see what I'm doing is I'm just using these numbers and moving it the distance it says that it is away from the zero. So I'm going to go ahead and click do it. And there we go. So now we can see it's in the upper right corner. And you can see that I did that without having any geometry to pick. I just used the distances that's, that are listed in my workspace to create that theoretical corner up there. All right, so let me zoom back. Now let's get this, let's get the stock around this bad boy. So let's get rid of this, we're done translating. View, shrink wrap. There we go. So now it's oriented. So now the next step would be, okay, Chris, that's great. But now I wanna go ahead and, you know, drill these holes on the side. Let's say, you know, these holes. So now how do I do this? Do I have to rotate it again and do all the crazy stuff? The answer is no, you don't. Um, all you have to do is create a new coordinate system. So if we go to our coordinate systems here, right? remember what I said, that very first one, this is like the horizon, you can't move it, you can only move the part around it. But I don't wanna have to move this part every single time, especially if I need to go back and remachine some of these because then I'll have to try and figure out where it was and move it. What I can do is I can create a new coordinate system and I'm gonna do it from view. This is, this is probably the easiest way that I've found to do it. So I'm just gonna click around here until I get a good view. So it's this one, all right? If you want to, let's say for instance, I wanted this backside. How do I do that from view? I'm gonna hold down my Alt key and click on it. And when you hold down your Alt key, oops, what you get is the opposite of these views. So if I, let's say my top view, let's go ahead and get it in there. If I hold down my Alt key and hit top view, I get the bottom view. Here's my front view. If I hold down my Alt key and hit front view, I get the back view. Okay, so, but this one is my front view. I'm in the front view. I'm not gonna touch anything. And I'm gonna right mouse button click and I'm gonna hit new coordinate system from view. Okay, so now I have a coordinate system that's oriented correctly, but the position's off, all right? So here's where you can do a couple things. You can do it like I did and move that coordinate system. I'm sorry, let me back up for a second. To modify the coordinate system, we just move back here to coordinate system palette. So here we can align it with different lines, um, align coordinate system plane, things like that. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to grab some geometry and use that geometry to um, define my coordinate system. So I don't know that, you know, I'm gonna turn on my wireframe and I'm just gonna pick this line at the very bottom. I'm gonna right mouse button click, extract edges. Hit okay. So I'm gonna turn off my wireframe so you can see what I did. I had this little line down there. I can say, you know what, I want to align my center point with a certain point on my screen. Again, I'm gonna make that all zero. Okay, so I, I've talked about this in a, in a couple other videos, but I, you know, I, it's really important and it saves a ton of time, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna say it again. Um, I want to fill in all of these fields, the X, Y, Z, with this point right here, okay? So instead of doing this and holding down Alt and clicking it, um, highlighting the Y, holding down my Alt key and clicking it. What I can do is I, I can just click one. I'm gonna hit Shift Alt and click on that point. And it's gonna uh, populate all of those fields for me. Again, that's Shift and Alt at the same time. And I'm gonna click Do It. So you can see when I do it this way with XYZ, you can see that it kind of shoots it up into space. This is another uh, question I get a lot. Uh, the difference between XYZ and HVD. 
XYZ is you're moving it in relation to that original XY plane. HVD is you're moving it in relation to the active coordinate system. Okay, so because I had XYZ, it moved it these dimensions from that um, original coordinate system. So I'm going to go ahead and hit Control Z, and I want to move it in relationship to this coordinate system and to the one that I am that I have here because this is the the uh, work group and the coordinate system under which I made this geometry. So let's go ahead and hit do it. And we can see there, that looks a lot better. It just gets right there. So at that point, you can do a bunch of different things um, using these. You can switch out the orientation from that point. If you want to move it around, uh, the depth, you can flip it. So you can see that positive is this way. If I want to turn around and do this way. Again, you can't rip modify that original coordinate system. This is one of the one of the questions I get a lot. So let's say if I made this XY plane my original coordinate system. So you can't move it. You can't do anything with that coordinate system. You can't flip it. You can't move it. You can't do anything. But with this one, you can change it all around. So really, there's that one set coordinate system that, um, that you can't move. So anyway, from this point, we can uh, maybe draw some more geometry, maybe put a point in this corner using these dimensions here for my stock size and then move to that point and change the origin point. Uh, we can do a theoretical center, things like that. So that's how you can move and manipulate and orientate a part that's imported from another CAD system. If you have any questions about importing data or orientating a part or anything like that, please feel free to contact your local reseller or give Gibbs Camp technical support a call. Thank you.